So the process of getting foreign players to come and play here in Denmark uh, for our team is um, pretty simple, to be honest. We might not be looking for the best athlete or the best performer that we can get, but we're looking for somebody who has the ability and the personality to contribute to the whole organization. Not just the senior team as a player or coaching uh, their position, but even the juniors or the administration as a whole. That obviously leaves us with a more narrow field of uh, candidates, but at the end of the day, we're looking for the guy who is leaving the biggest impact with the club after leaving, not necessarily while they're here. With the way we look at it, there's two types of imports. There's the American imports, and we have the European imports. And usually we bring in a couple of Americans, and depending on the season and how our budget looks and the need on our team will bring in supplement guys from the EU country. What we usually do is that we go online, look at all college statistics from the prior year, guys that are coming out of college, if we're looking for an American player, seeing that, okay, who are the top five guys ranked in every position? Maybe we even go top 10. And we don't necessarily just look at the FBS level. We actually never look at the, the FBS level. We usually go lower than that, all the way down to D3 and NAI and stuff like that, to see, okay, if there's some people standing out, because usually there's a lot of talent in the, in the States. It, and most of the times we'll see that they don't know anything about the possibility of coming to Europe playing football and, and prolonging their career. So I will say that it really starts with us just finding names and contact them. That, that could be on, on social media usually, just getting you know a hold of them. At times it will be maybe through some other connections, maybe contacting the school, getting contact information on them if they're not on social media, trying to find tape on them, figuring out are they really worth that, uh, you know, uh, contacting, seeing highlight tapes. Some of them have, don't even have highlight tapes. We might have to watch some of the games they played just to get a feel for the player. Some of the biggest obstacles of trying to get an import here is actually some of the guys don't even know that they are able to play in Europe. Like they don't have any knowledge. They think that college career and it, if they don't go pro, it's done. I think some of the guys that we're talking with, we, we basically need to tell them about, hey, there is European football. That one. He picks up the blitz and competes it for Kevin Schmelz! What a play! You know, you can play here at a decent level. You can get an experience for a, a, for a lifetime, you know, experience a different culture. And just kind of going from there. It's not just football. Basically, we're recruiting people to to the whole experience of being in another country, experiencing another culture and playing uh, playing football at a, at, a, at a decent level. I think some of the biggest concerns is that we you know, we really don't know what guy we're getting. Woo! You know, one thing is seeing the football. You know, if you feel comfortable about the football you see on tape, if there's good tape, and that's a big if, there's not necessarily a 10 minute highlight reel where you can kind of get a good feel. Sometimes you only get, maybe get five or 10 plays and you gotta get a, you know, a feel out of that. And that's not much. Then you speak to the guy. Uh, at times, they would say anything because they want the opportunity. So just kind of within maybe a few talks with a guy, <clears throat> you got to figure out, is he just saying what you want to hear? Or is he basically just trying to kind of be as straightforward with the things that, uh, that you're asking him? The American imports we're bringing in this year is, first off, we have uh, Logan, our D-line guy from uh, last year. Awesome guy. He's not just about football, he's also about developing what we do as a club here. And he's a versatile guy. You know, Logan can play around the D-line. We are using him in a variety of spots, you know, <clears throat> and he can probably also help out on offense uh, this season. I think he's a whole package. He can help us develop on the football field. He's a great guy, he's a great leader. He's gonna help out our youth team. He's gonna help out our recruitment. You know, he's a full package. We have a quarterback coming in, Aaron Ellis, who formerly played here in Denmark, like Zona Oaks, and played down in Czech. Uh, and we're bringing him in because when he was in Denmark, we believe that he was actually one of the better quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback in the Danish league that season. And we actually had him on our paper for the 2020 season before we went in another direction with our former quarterback, Tanner Gala. So he's been a spotlight for quite some time. We were pretty quick on contacting him when we knew that Tanner wasn't coming back. So going from one good quarterback to hopefully an even better quarterback uh, and, and lead us to the memorable. I think that Aaron is capable of doing a lot of stuff and through talks with Aaron, I feel comfortable that he's also adaptable to what we have as a skill position groups uh, on offense. 
that we can kind of adapt what he can do to our Danish players and also the other way around to be an effective offense because I think Aaron can do most of the stuff what we're going to ask him to do. The requirements to bring in EU players are a bit more easier because you don't have to apply for the working permit because they're allowed to just enter the country. We do have a French D-line guy coming in. We look at him as a development guy. He's not played high-level football yet. We're looking for us to develop him. Uh, hopefully he can contribute this season and we're looking forward to have him here. I'm Sal Salio. I play, I play defensive tackle for the Gold Eagles and uh, I'm, from, I'm from Toulouse, France. Being here is the best opportunity for me to develop as a player because the situation in France is like awful and uh, the, cancel, the season was cancelled so I'm ready to do whatever it takes and win the championship. Go Gold Eagles! And then we have a repeat guy who is our right tackle. He's coming back as well, a Mexican and Spanish guy. He was really also high on our list to come back. He's a high energy, high motor, good guy on and off the field. And he's probably a top five offensive lineman here in Denmark. So I'm really excited about having him back. Hi everyone, my name is Luis de las Heras. I'm from Mexico, Mexico City to be precisely. I play as an offensive lineman. I play left guard, right guard right now. And I'm playing with the gold diggers because back in 2020 with all the lockdown that happened around the world, I saw that Denmark was a huge opportunity for me to keep playing American football. And nowadays, uh, staying here with the Gold Eagles has been an amazing decision for me. There's a family for me right now, and luckily for me, I also find a job here in Denmark. So that's the reason I'm staying here. My name is Lars Carlsen. I am the CEO of Danish American Football. And my role is to be the yeah, leadership of the whole federation. My background is uh, American football. I'm still also the head coach of the senior men's uh, national team. So my background is uh, American football. Beside American football, we also organize the flag football and, and cheerleading. In America, you have high school. Most of sports are organized in the high school during the day. In Denmark, we have not organized sports in the schools. We have uh, PE classes that have to show the kids all the different variations of sports and keep them active. but. It's not organized, there's no games whatsoever between schools. Uh, there's soccer tournaments in the past, but no no games, no nothing going on between schools. So all sports have to go outside, the kids have to go outside the school and find uh, what we call a club. There's a club for all sports in Denmark are organized under locally clubs. They're run by private persons who get together and find people like to form a club uh, for their sports and they organize it that way. So it's, it's kind of... It's not organized in the school. You have to go outside the school and you have to find your way around. Since it's not organized in school, so like see American football, it's not available for all kids in Denmark. It's only available where some people have got together, a group of people, and formed this club where they can play. So, uh, so we have areas in Denmark where, where the kids can come and, and play American football because it's not, it's not possible. It's not organized uh, in that area. Being an import, getting in has a reach a high level in the States coming over to Denmark and if they can teach that to the hopeful kids in the club they are affiliated with, how they reach that, what techniques they're using uh, and how they approach, how to be focused and all that stuff. You're not getting to the highest level or, or close to the highest level in the States unless you're really focused and some of the stuff bringing that to, to Denmark and some of the kids believe in themselves and believe that we can take this to a higher level that, that they already are right now. I work in finance, God bless, no, it's not by chance, no. don't dab me, you're not my man, no. don't at me, you're not my man, no. mama said don't buy it if you can, I buy it twice, buy it twice. I can buy the tools and I don't pump fake with the price, with the price. always on the ground, I put in work with all my might, my, my. I know that he got me, got me, got me, Pop is coming back to Denmark. <laughs> <laughs>